Hey everybody, Bob Cruz here with the Software Testing Happy Hour. Welcome. Uh, as always, my cohort in my cohort in crime, Matt Kubal, is here as well. Hello. And we are we're here at Inflectorcon 2023 in Washington D.C. Gave us a perfect opportunity to have our guest, Bob Johnson, CEO and founder of Critical Logic, join us. And Bob, welcome. Cheers, Thanks. everyone. Glad to be here, guys. So everybody, I am very excited. Checkpoint Technologies is in the process of teaming up with Bob and Critical Logics on a number of initiatives, which we're very excited about. And, and Matt and I are going to uh, just throw a few questions at Bob. The first one, Bob, <laughs> tell us about uh, Critical Logic, IQM, and just, you, you know, we want to hear your vision about the industry, too. Uh, yeah, my... My view of the industry, we we'll don't have enough time for that, but yeah, so I'm Bob Johnson, um, Critical Logics, and in my company, um, uh, we're a services and product company, but our product, what we're talking Bob about is uh, called IQM Studio. Uh, we've been around a long time, but we're kind of relaunching our product modern. Uh, our product's all about modeling, uh, trying to model requirements and turn them into test cases and scripting. Uh, the whole idea is to bring technology or automation to the uh, process of designing and developing tests that give you coverage and make sure you're testing all your requirements correctly. So I'm um, uh, really glad to be partnering with you guys. Uh, we've been talking for years about how we could work together and I think now is the time we're going to really start uh, making a difference in the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you know, one of the great uh, great things about your solution, IQM Studio, I know it integrates with a lot of different yes. solutions, solutions that we have expertise in, uh, especially in regard to test automation, right? What are, right. What are just a few of those? Yeah, so the our, way our technology works is we build a model, and there's a lot to that, but you can build a functional model, we call it. And from that model, we can then map that onto a set of keywords and a framework that will generate literally generate code that can be automate, run by any automation tool, like uh, UFT or Renorex or uh, our favorite here, Rapiz, the tool from Inflectra. Uh, so basically, we're a tool agnostic. The idea is that our technology will generate scripts into whatever your automation environment is, whatever your tool you're using is. Um, so uh, you know that really lets people who are non-technical work with the models and generate the code so you don't have to have automation engineers generate that code. Uh, we're doing that automatically through an algorithm we developed over the years. Fantastic. Yeah. So you're trying to put me out of work? Sorry? You're trying to put me out of work? Put you out of work? No, <laughs> absolutely not. In fact, I'm trying to enhance your job and make it yeah. more important. Our, the whole idea here is that we take a, somebody who's really an expert at automation, the technology of that, and we leverage your skills by our tool is like an abstract layer between the SMEs, the people who know right. what's supposed to be tested, and somebody like you, an engineer, who knows how to do that testing. Yeah. So both people don't need to know each other's skills. So this is a skill mapping tool right. that lets a business analyst build a model and say, this is what I want the software to do, and then you can say, here's your framework that makes it happen. Right. We don't have to do the testing. And so, that would be very useful in my job in the healthcare field because there's oh, yeah. so many workflows and paths through the system that I have no idea about. And sure. If I sit in front of that system with an automation tool open, I'm, I'm immediately stopped because I have no idea where I'm going past the login. So if I can just develop some of the framework pieces and you know make the buttons click or whatever for people, then that's great that they can just go in and select. Yeah, and one, one thing we say is that what that allows every automation script to be as good as your best engineer, which would be right. you in this case. So every script that we generate has your stamp on it, your standard, your expertise involved in it. It's not individual skill sets, it's your skill set that makes all the difference. So right. like I say, it's an amplifier. Yeah. So. And one of the things, I mean, we've, we've seen uh, is that it... I don't want to say it simplifies, but it minimizes the pain of maintenance. Absolutely. Especially when it comes with automated scripts, correct? Because correct. you just have to change it, the model and then regenerate. That's exactly yeah. right. So the, the, the actual uh, specifications, if you will, for the automation is coming from these models and the, and the, the test cases that are generated. So maintenance is a breeze because if you change the model, 
you've instantly changed and update all of your tests. So there's no maintenance, there's no, is this test gonna work anymore? Do I even need this test anymore? The model will tell you, no, these are the tests that are still good, these are the ones that are updated. That's all automatic, so it almost eliminates that script maintenance. That's often the project killer, frankly, is oh, script maintenance. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And with the integrations, you don't have to worry about putting the test cases that are generated in place. It That's just right. all goes where it needs to go. Right, so the integration is like, when we press the button to generate the script, that actually goes into the environment where your tool runs the script. So if you're using Rabiz, we're just generating a script directly into a folder with the correct header files and the object definition files. All of that we generate into the environment so you can immediately go to the tool and run it. No matter what tool you're using, whether it's GFT or Ranrx or anything, that script is ready to run from the moment we generate it. And then the, the other thing too is, and, and I know you can word this better than I, so I am asking you to reword it, but uh, we all care about traceability and yes. we all care about coverage. So that's something else that your solution decreases the pain of is, you know, and it's only, only as good as the input and how you model it, but then you've got the requirements from that and you've got your test linked to that. So you've got both traceability and more confidence and coverage. Absolutely. Is that correct? Yes, that's absolutely correct because when you build a model, you're actually building the traceability to your requirement set, whatever it is, into the model. So the model, when it's generating tests and scripts, it carries that trace point or that link to the requirements with it into the scripts and the tests so that, and we keep track of that. So we can come back later and say, uh, requirement uh, traceability matrix, we call it. This test is, includes these requirements and we can show a list of requirements, say which which test will test which requirement, and importantly, which requirements are not being tested. So that's the point. And all that's integrated into the model, to the generation of the scripts and the test cases, yes. Great, great, fantastic. Yeah. So um, I guess the, the question I have is kind of about the modeling. That's the biggest hurdle, you know, in any organization is gonna be wanting to spend time on that because we've seen even testing tools there that have, integrated some modeling aspects and then eventually they're like we're not even gonna bother they just cut it out eventually right sure. so um what's what's what do you feel is the best approach to, to getting started and trying to sell that modeling well you? yeah you're, you're exactly right because of the the immediate thought of people it's oh i have to learn a new tool this is an extra step in my testing process so there's resistance to the idea of adding modeling to your process right um but the results, though, is that you have to look at what you're not going to have to do when you do take on the modeling activity, right? right? So you're not going to write, have to write tests, you're not going to write and maintain automation scripts where you need them. Um, so those are important things. There's another kind of very important benefit that comes about that until you actually do it, you don't quite recognize it, is that when you build the model, it requires that you analyze and synthesize all the various requirement points you have and say, hey, what does this do? Why is this supposed to happen? And all those are the questions you have to answer to build a correct model. Mm -hmm. um, that has the impact of improving the requirements or finding ambiguities and pointing out problems sure. or missing things in the requirements just by doing the modeling. So we don't really advertise it this way, but when you build a model, you're actually validating the requirements, okay? Mm -hmm. Which, uh, you know, if you're serious about quality, you will know that a very high percentage of defects in production come from requirement problems. So this directly attaches that. So yes, there's some uh, concepts behind modeling that need to be adopted by the team. Um, but once you say, yes, I can get those results by modeling, then people say, give it to me. Right. Um, the, the consumers of the model too are, when we think of it as obviously the test team, but it's also the development team and the requirement team because they're seeing the results of the model, literally a picture of what's supposed to happen. That visual visualization of the requirements mm -hmm. is a very important tool in communicating not just to test, but back to the business and to development as well. 
And, and I do want to remind everybody, we are at Inflectricon 2023. If you hear some background noise, it's because at Inflectricon 2023, people are not only learning, but they are having some fun yeah. and laughing over there. And there's yeah. beer in every conference room. Right? That's, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. And unlimited coffee. So that's <laughs> always nice. Yeah, yeah. So, so one of the things I, I want to want to ask you, yesterday when I did my keynote on, on risk analysis, I mentioned the fact that you know, as an asset, when I was talking requirements, you know, also could you could relate that or think of use cases and user stories. So when we're saying requirements here, is that also true? Yes, actually, that's a good point because uh, I know requirements is kind of a loaded word here. Right, right. And I usually say requirements with a small r because what <laughs> okay. I really mean is the way we describe it is intended behavior. Okay. Okay? The shortcut of that is re requirements. but. Okay. Sure, we think of requirements, user stories, use cases, but if you really think about uh, what are all of the information that goes into telling me what I should code and what I should test, there's lots of things like UX standards and security and um, you know just existing system interfaces. So there's all these different sources of what we would call requirements that need to go into how do I test the thing? How do I know it's working correctly? So when we draw it on a slide, we draw that as a big cloud, a fuzzy, all these multiple sources and errors, arrows and uh, owners of all this information that has to come in and synthesize to turn into code or turn into tests. So what we do is take all that various cloud of requirement sources, if you will, and synthesize it into this single model where you can see a lot of that in one place. Uh, so yeah, when we say requirements, we're not rejecting or trying to step on Agile or anything like that. Certainly in Agile projects, you're going to be using user, uh, use, use cases and user stories. Those become the primary source of uh, information to do the modeling from. Yeah. Great, great. So have you been having fun here in, in Electricon? <laughs> some fun, Bob, but some of it we can't talk about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 no, yeah, actually, Inflect.com is great. Uh, we love it. The weather's terrific. The team here is always terrific, and they're hosting this uh, this little conversation, which we thank them for. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, well, thank you so much, everyone, and be sure to look out. You know, we, we publish our software testing happy hour up on YouTube, uh, not necessarily in a particular sequence, but since we're here at Inflectricon 2023, we're also going to be having a great conversation with Adam Sandman, the CEO of Inflectra, who I know, by the way, you are a partner with yes. yeah, Critical Logic. So. We are also a partner of uh, Inflectra. I'm happy to be in so I've been several years. Yeah. yeah, it's a great partnership. And if they wanted to, re if somebody wanted to reach out to you, Bob? Yeah, we're at uh, criticallogic.com, uh, critical-logic.com. Um, you know, my website has Lots and lots of information and uh, information about partnerships and so on. So, yeah, look us up. Yeah, fantastic. Well, hey, thank you very much. Cheers again. Cheers again, gentlemen. Matt. And cheers. Matt, as always, thank you. Great questions. And thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you.